Well, it's Groundhog's Day again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my favorite movie ever. Happy Groundhog's Day. Dieter, you're back. I love yeah. it. You ready to go, my man? I really enjoyed Take Your Kids to Work Day last night. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. He's Dieter Kurtenbach. You can follow him on Twitter at Dieter. You can follow me on Twitter at Dog Surf Road Show. And you can follow this program on Twitter at Locked On Dubs. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Dieter, what a game last night. We got to start with that, obviously. I mean, yeah. the, you know, ha- every player that we deem important wasn't playing. Give us except your thoughts, Kavan man. Lo- Give us a recap. Give except Kavan Looney, Looney I, his I, respect. I, I apologize. <laughs> in my defense, in my defense, it, my inside voice kept saying, why is Looney playing? I wanted yes. him to rest. Well, because so, uh, I, I think it, it lent itself to your the argument that you've been making for a very long time. If Looney didn't play, they would literally have no centers. But uh, l- listen, yeah. the game had very little to do with Kavan Looney, who was a minus 12, a game worse minus 12 for the Warriors. But 12 and 12, in, 12 rebounds. 12 and 12. Listen, yeah. Looney, Looney was a beast, and they were losing by 12 when he was on the floor. Uh, I'm not putting that on solely Kavan Looney, but I, I do want to say, I mean, the, the game flipped. The uh, Spurs took their foot off the accelerator, and the kiddos just... just absolutely went bonkers I mean can we talk I mean about Jordan Poole who was fantastic 31 points in the game but I think we need to talk about Mr. Moses Moody who knocked down six three-point shots and for all we have said oh. about Jonathan Kaminga who by the way was also spectacular in this game and perhaps yes. the main reason that it flipped over uh, Moody was steady throughout and Steve Kerr's given him a chance here we know that those chances are maybe a little tighter, a little shorter leash than than we initially would expect for a young player, as we've seen with Jonathan Kaminga. But it's so nice to see Moses Moody, who is supposed to be part of this future core, is supposed right. to be a role player who perhaps could give you some serious contributions or at least partial contributions this season. It was so nice to see him translate what he's been doing down in the G League where he has been embarrassing dudes, just wrecking them <laughs> up and down the floor and now transfer it over a little bit to the NBA. It's never going to be 27 a night on 60% shooting, all that stuff, but it's good to see that this guy, yeah, he has the goods and he's young and He needed to figure out how to play a new and different role in the NBA because he was the man at Arkansas, and he's still very young. Him, Kaminga, Poole, I mean, you can toss in a bunch of other guys. They had nobody. They had no reason. The Warriors took a a schedule L, and they came out with a culture win. It was fantastic. It really was, man. And, And the Moody thing, let's start with that. I mean, until a week ago, he didn't look ready. Like yes. he looked like a player who belonged in the G League, and mm-hmm. you could understand him sending him there. And this Texas two step man, that like we saw the coming out party. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, like if you're if you're Bob Myers, Kerr, etc., like is that just a cool thing? But you're focused on other stuff, or do you suddenly see these two players as part of the picture? Like, what do you think in postseason now? Because suddenly Moody looks like a like a grown man. He looks ready. Yeah. I, listen, I, I think that it's a nice thing to have in the back of your head if things get weird in the playoffs. And we know that the <laughs> yes. playoffs, you know, the playoffs are a different sport in so many ways. And, they're you know, games are dictated by foul problems and rotations getting knocked out of whack. And the regular season is just survive and advance to the next day. Uh, yeah. You don't really put in game plans or anything. I mean, we saw how the Warriors were treating this game going in. Uh Pretty high level of disrespect, if we're being honest. And uh, But Greg Popovich wrought it upon himself. The NBA wrought it upon themselves that the Warriors could rest all of those dudes for this game. Regardless, uh, it's nice to know in the back of your head that you can put Moses Moody in a game, put him in the corner. He can knock down a couple of three-pointers. He's going to give you some hustle plays, and he's not completely lost on defense anymore. And I think that that's a nice thing to foster for these next 30 games or so. It's all that remains in the regular season. We know what Kaminga is. You put him out out there to break up some ice you put him out there to just run the floor be a, a top one percent athlete make something happen Jonathan for better or for worse take five fouls have five dunks just be an agent of chaos sometimes the Warriors need that sometimes a game has brought been brought down to a slog that's how you beat the Warriors and Jonathan Kaminga can break all that up Moses Moody is much more a, of a calming presence much more mm-hmm. of just a, a general you know he, he's just a classic wing and 
Sometimes you just need another dude. Sometimes your wings aren't playing well. Sometimes you just need to go small and you need three or four wings out on the floor around a, a, a Stephen Curry, around a Jordan Poole. And it's just nice to know that you have one more of those guys. Because I agree with you 100%. Moses Moody was looking lost at the NBA yeah. level. And he was kind of stuck in a purgatory, right? Because he's kicking ass at the G League level, but he's not getting it done at the NBA level. Like, you couldn't have him on the floor. He's totally lost on defense and offensively. He's just uh, tentative and tight. And it was all it was all very nasty. And it, it's just nice to see this. And, again, we have to note you know, the level of competition and such. But um, it's nice to see that, hey, th- there's something there. He can be competent. He can be, you know, he's figured some stuff out in 52 games or whatever the stretch of this season has been where he's been up at the NBA level. And it's not going to be like this every night. We know that. It's not even going to be a tenth of this every night. But just being able to know that you can give him five to ten minutes in a game, that's a really nice, it adds a level of comfort to the Golden State Warriors because, frankly, you know, Juan Toscano Anderson might not be that guy. He's in certain yeah. situations. You don't know what you're getting with, with Andre Guadalla moving forward. You'd like to think he's there every day. Damian Lee is just up and down and up and down. A great game last night, but it's like, great. my goodness, could we be a, a little steadier here, Ombre? It's, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, you, you have to go by gut sometimes. You have to go by feel sometimes especially at the wing position where so many parts are interchangeable and just having the ability to put Moses Moody on the floor and feel like it might go okay, I think does change the paradigm a smidge come playoff time. But he's not going to be part of like the regular playoff rotation, whereas Jonathan Kaminga I think will be because Jonathan Kaminga is just simply a better player, a more athletic player, a more talented player. But I wouldn't be stunned if Moses Moody gave five to ten minutes every now and again and, and didn't look half bad considering the pr- progress that he's made already so far this year. No, I'm absolutely with you, man. And it was just such a beautiful sight to see Moses Moody coming out. I mean, he it's it, uh, there was one play in particular where he saw his aggressiveness diving mm-hmm. for a loose ball. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that play in the fourth quarter. Oh, where yeah. he, I think he's the one who ended up with it. And yep. it, just, it, it was just such a beautiful sight to see. And for the people criticizing Steve Kerr for the lack of playing time, I, I've, you know, I asked you a couple weeks ago, you know, yeah. is Kerr discriminatory toward the younger players? And um, I, I really love that he made this decision to just rest Everybody, every veteran, yep. pretty much, with the exception of, uh, and I don't know if even JTA is a veteran, but or Damian Lee, but, um, yeah. and we still saw victory. I mean, the Spurs, they couldn't miss for three quarters. That was, I, it was how frustrated were you watching that? Where like every oh. shot was going in, everything. It was crazy. I don't, I don't get frustrated just because I, I do like. Uh, l- listen, we, we all know where sort of my homerism ties lie in. Like I'm going to find excellence in the Golden State Warriors if I find any at all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna announce it, but. Um, but the Charlotte Hornets are your team, otherwise, totally. We all follow, yeah. and I know I'm kidding. It's it's the greatness that is Jordan <laughs> and the modern now the modern day Bulls. But yeah, it's it's it was not frustrating to watch it because again, you go in saying this is just a scheduled loss, and there were multiple times throughout that game where I said, "What am I doing here? What am I doing with my life?" <laughs> like, what you mean watching it? Yeah, just turn, I'm going to turn this crap off. <laughs> like I watched overtime of the Sharks game during halftime. <laughs> Did and you like, really? Oh, yeah. Like, it was <laughs> halftime, and I'm like, I don't need to hear the analysis of this game. No. Like, I saw it. Other team couldn't miss. There's your analysis. Congrats, Bonte and, and D-Wright. You got it right there. I don't know. Go to commercial for the next 12 minutes. Uh, no, I flipped I flipped it over to the Sharks game, by the way. A horrendous penalty call in overtime. Just absolutely absurd. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, and there were multiple times where I'm like, what else is on? Oh, let's see what's going on with Texas and Texas Tech. And, oh, this seems like fun. Like, I was trying to avoid the game, and I got very lucky that there was nothing else good on right around <laughs> 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, maybe about eight minutes to go, oh. and the Warriors cut it to single digits. And it's like, well, now i got to watch the rest of this. And damn, am I happy that I did. And, and you, you fill in the gaps of what, you know, I actually apparently didn't miss more than about three or four minutes. But uh, just, again, <laughs> the, mental, the mental space of – what else is on? You know, the Warriors didn't come into this game with the intent of winning, clearly, by the way that they put the lineup out on the floor. Um, you, you, it was one of these games that we've seen now a couple times this season, the most clear-cut example being the Toronto game, where it's just like, yeah. hey, let's see what the Santa Cruz Warriors would look like if they played in the NBA. Yes, and, call it and a the Pistons, learning right? Experience. Yeah, Pistons is another great example. Yeah, it's called yeah. a learning experience. Let's see what we can take from this game in a positive realm. Well, you can take a whole ton of positives from this because if you get the w a lot of good things had to happen and uh yeah listen it's regression to the mean in a negative realm for the spurs this is a spurs team that 
let's be real about this. And I, I think that this maybe is the one main point that I want to take away from last night's game. I want to mention all of the you know wonderful performances from guys that we didn't expect it from. And I, I you know you want to build that up as a positive because winning is the most important thing. But right. you know when people are are critical of Steve Kerr for not playing young guys more and things like that. I would just like to remind you that success is terribly fleeting. And if you need any example of that, think about how consistently awesome the San Antonio Spurs were for almost two decades. And think about how crappy they are now and just how (laughs) stuck in the morass they are now. I like a lot of their players. I really do. I think that they have some really quality players. They're not even going to make – they're not even – what are they even – they're not yeah play in tournament. I don't are think they are. Here? I don't think they are. Yeah, they're not even they in that. The the Portland Trailblazers are doing everything in their power to lose as many games as possible, and they can't get out of the play in tournament. That's how bad <laughs> the Western Conference is. That's how bad the Spurs are, and the Pelicans, and all these teams. Uh, Sacramento, who the Warriors will see on Thursday, like it is. It is a really bad situation. The NBA has a bad product right now. Thank goodness for the Warriors. Uh, but just remember, like you know, chase wins while you have the opportunity to chase wins, because nothing is guaranteed moving forward and really the NBA hinges on two or three great players or even one great player per team and as soon as the Spurs lost Kawhi Leonard for reasons yet to be fully understood even years later it, 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 it just brought an end to that franchise more or less as we knew it and I know they held it together with you know Lamarcus Aldridge and DeMar DeRozan for a while but that was merely just keeping their head above water they're drowning now uh, again, I like a lot of their young players. Uh, I just I, I feel bad for the Spurs in a lot of ways because they're doing good development. But who cares about development, man? Get these championships. And so far as development can help you win those championships this year, next year, the year after, do that. But don't yeah. you know? Don't don't forget what the overall goal is, and don't forget that hey, man, these windows where you can have it like this, where you can be in the running, where you can have a month like the Warriors just had. And as weird and strange and topsy-turvy as it was, and you're still right there, second place in a Western Conference that's crappy, you know, second-best record in the (laughs) NBA, all that stuff. These moments are rare, and Warriors Mm -hmm. fans should be able to look backwards and say, hey, you know, we know how rare this is. We just had two bad seasons, so obviously we're not taking this for granted, but you should also look forwards. You should look to teams that have been in situations quasi like this and see where they're at once they kind of let their foot off the accelerator, once something goes wrong for them. And remember that, man, do not take this moment for granted. Kaminga, Moody, everybody, great game last night. Poole, nice to see him get on the good side of things. All of this very positive, not taking anything away from it. It should be celebrated. It should be applauded. It should be seen as a good thing. But don't get on Steve Kerr for not playing young guys because the goal is to win a damn championship. And I don't know how these young guys, outside of playing five to ten minutes, maybe in a weird spot come playoff time are supposed to affect that sort of winning. So um, you can't you can't really have it both ways. I think Kerr is handling it in a good way because, again, he's keeping his eye on the prize. He's chasing wins this year. I know that it's all, you know, kind of a, a tongue-in-cheek joke, but, like, it's true at the same time. And, again, that's the most important thing. You'd hate on him. You'd hate on him if he was doing it the opposite way. If we were getting 25 minutes of Kaminga and only 30 minutes of Steph a night and the Warriors were in fourth place in the Western Conference or seventh place in the Western Conference, can you imagine the vitriol? You can't have it both ways. You can't always get what you want. Just enjoy the fact <laughs> that on a night where the Warriors went in and said, let's hold this L, they came out with a W. Absolutely. And, and my, my personal feeling is, is Greg, Pop, this is Greg Popovich's last year. I believe that he's going to break the wins record and then he'll, he'll probably go into the sunset. Um, we'll talk about the Warriors and so much more when we come back. Uh, first NBA fans, let's talk about prize picks. Are you Ooh, looking yeah. for a daily? Are you Dieter looking for a daily fantasy option for the NBA? I'm sure as hell doing that right now, because I just <laughs> let me tell you, I have two things that I truly love in this world. I love fantasy baseball and I love fantasy football, and your boy is stuck in no man's land. So if I can get a little bit of action in with some prize picks, I might be interested in such a thing for the NBA to get me more locked in moving forward. Absolutely, and that's the award-winning app, Prize Picks. Mm-hmm. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. D- Dieter loves fantasy. 
Love I it. love prize picks, and we know yeah. you will too. And basically, all I do, you pick two to five players and an over under on their projections. You can win up to 10 times the amount you bet on any entry, and it's just you versus the projected numbers. Entries mm. can be made in 60 seconds or less. Prize picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. That's a huge point for me. I, I oh, want my money 100%. back if I want it, right? Yeah. yeah and. Oh. Uh, Dude, so I got um, some stories about that in the opposite direction. Oh, you got you got to end up going to a Bahamian island or Bahamian island. Uh, oh man, and don't even start me with the dudes who you know are playing daily fantasy and they're running forty five different algorithms to optimize lineups. And it's like this isn't fun. This isn't this isn't fair. This is I'm, it's like I'm showing up at Goldman Sachs and looking to you know place a bet against the house. Come on now, I love that one v one. Right, it's you versus the house. Hey, that's a pretty good play. I like my chances there. I like it a lot better than doing these dudes with the supercomputers. <laughs> Absolutely. And for a limited time, Price Picks has an exclusive no brainer of an offer for all yep. of our users. Users get $50. For free, if a player in your first prize picks entry scores just a single point, but you must use the code NBA. That's right. This is an exclusive offer available to locked on fans. Sign up today and use the code NBA. $50 for free if a player in your first prize picks entry scores a single point. That is prizepicks.com. And on a more depressing note, it's tax season almost here. Oh, we got to deal with that. I'm I'm really not excited about that moment. But I always people... <laughs> I always yeah. do my taxes on the Sunday before the Super Bowl. Like that's like a, a, a curtain bakian tradition because there's no football on, and so it's like okay, I'll just get all my tax stuff together. And the right. last couple of years, it had been a real problem um, because you get a bunch of W twos and 1099 Cs coming in. You get all this stuff, and it was all coming after that. It was all coming on Super Bowl Sunday. It was ruining my Super Bowl Sundays <laughs> because I'd be getting all this tax stuff. It's like I got to get this done. I'm someone who tries to get that kind of stuff, you know, handled early so that if there's problems, I got more room for it. Uh, but thank goodness for the NFL and going to an 18 week schedule. I'm back online. <laughs> And so, you know, I'm actually kind of weirdly looking forward to tax season. That's, that's, well, that's but, well, people think unusual circumstances mean complicated taxes, just like what you explained regarding the Super Bowl. It used to be in January. Now it's in the second week of February. Mm -hmm. But for TurboTax Live experts, that's what makes things interesting. We all have unique lives, whether you invest in crypto for the first time this year, you own an up-and-coming small business, or you're raising rambunctious twins. Ooh. Luckily, tur <laughs> luckily, TurboTax Live has experts who can answer your tax questions, walk you through the whole process, or do your taxes for you from start to finish. They help you get every deduction you deserve. Dieter, I know we deserve a lot of deductions. My God. No matter a unique situation. Yeah, we do a lot. I don't. I shouldn't be paying a single penny. And you can talk to a TurboTax <laughs> Live expert through your phone or computer without leaving your house. TurboTax Live experts are here to help you however you need it. And if you need an extra hand, Hand your taxes off to them, and they'll do it all for you. To TurboTax Live experts, an interesting life can mean an even greater refund. Visit TurboTax.com to learn more. You do your thing. They've got your taxes. Into it, TurboTax Live. <laughs> On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. For making Locked On Warriors your first listen, the NBA trade the trade deadline is a week from tomorrow. That's February 10th, Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 12 Pacific. And the Locked On NBA podcast will be covering it live from 2 to 4 p.m. Join Kim Becker, John Corrales, and Locked On fantasy basketball host Josh Lloyd to get analysis of every blockbuster move. Subscribe to Locked On NBA YouTube and turn your notifications on so you know when they go live. He's Dieter Kurdenbach. I'm Cyrus Soft. So you don't know, speak of the trades, by the way. That snuck uh, up know, we, on me. The, What's the trade deadline? The trade deadline. It, My God. What, what, how does, when did that happen? Week from tomorrow. And look, here's one thing I, I, I definitely do not want the Warriors to do, and that's make a trade. Yeah. If they're going to get an extra big, let's say hypothetically, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of like not going to bring up, I, me personally, I'm not going to bring up Wiseman <laughs> that much anymore because until after, until it's, the All-Star break and after, no, there isn't much more we can do or talk about, right? I mean, like... Cyrus, I mean, it's pretty clear that right now it'd be a surprise if he played it all this season. I think yeah, that that's so, the way we have to frame it and then be happily surprised. So, yeah, but but it's a big decision because if, if the Warriors come to that realization, then you suddenly have a roster spot to use, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't want them making a trade for a player, especially when the yeah. buyout market is around the corner. But yeah. what do you think? You know, we talked about Paul Millsap uh, the other day. And again, I'm not sitting here saying he's the, the cure-all for everything, but I wouldn't no. mind him as yeah. the 15th man to play 
10, 15 minutes a game. Dude, what do you think about the Brooklyn Nets just holding him hostage, wanting to trade him? I mean, like, buy the man out. Let him pick a team. Like, are, well, do, you, do you support that? Or what are your thoughts on that? I know it's random. It's the Nets. and But, you know, Millsap <laughs> I mean, did, could be. He did sign a contract. <laughs> and it's not as if the Nets don't have PTSD from, like, 14 of their dudes all being out at one point you know earlier this season so right. listen man i just buy him out like hell no they, they might need him at some point um but he's know, not playing it, but he's not playing yeah, but he's he, might, he might but somebody might you know twist their knee or sprain an ankle yeah. and then suddenly paul Millsap has to play 20 minutes a night their point guard only plays half of the games like how are we supposed to you know like tell the brooklyn nets who again have been dealing with injuries and covid and um, you know, been essentially playing the Long Island Nets alongside Kevin Durant for stretches this season. Like, how are we <laughs> supposed to tell them, like, no, don't hold on to a play. Just let him go. You don't need him. Like, they're like, we need everybody and then more. So um, yeah. I get it. I understand. Uh, I don't know if he'll be bought out or not because, again, circumstances such to where <sighs> they might need him. Uh, he signed the contract. I'm not sure. It, it, we can be real about this, too. It's like, Dude wasn't exactly brought in on a big money contract either. No, like he's a man. Vet men. Yeah, that's my, and, that's and, my point. Like, you're buying out a guy on the vet men. Like, he clearly signed up for Brooklyn. Now, did he sign up for more minutes? Maybe. Some, I don't know. Um, it, I, I don't know the in and outs of the Paul Millsap thing. I do know that the Warriors kicked the tires on it. I do know that he chose Brooklyn over yeah. many suitors, including the Warriors. So, yes. it is a... So, you're saying he, he deserves he's an to option. sit there... Yeah, no, okay. I'm not saying he deserves any. I'm saying I'm saying he signed a contract, and it's not weird to me that they're making him honor the contract instead of like they don't know him squat. He's on a minimum deal, and again, this is a team that knows all too well that they could end up having to play Paul Millsap twenty something minutes a night any moment, at any yeah. moment whatsoever. So it, it's not strange to me that they haven't moved on from him. Now that said. Uh, wouldn't shock me in the least bit if they cut him in order to bring in somebody else. And then Paul Millsap's fully available. So uh, I don't know. Are there any other names that, that come to mind for you as it pertains to the buyout market? Because it Tristan is clear Thompson. And, and Larry Kerr brought talking. this up with me last week. And yeah. he said he said that Tristan Thompson is a player that could be made available. I would love him backing up Looney, putting in 10, 15 a night. That would be... Phenomenal. Cyrus, I mean, this is going to be the first time I ever say this. I agree with you 1,000%. Oh, wow. All right. First time I'm ever. In. Out of all the things I've ever said, I'm this the is in. the first time. <laughs> all the way in. All right. So you like the height? Like, what is it about Tristan Thompson you love that she did in with Millsap? They're both, I mean, Tristan's not that young. Um, Tristan's, Tristan, is it... Tristan's entire game is predicated on just doing hustle crap. And yeah, he doesn't necessarily true. do it all that great anymore. But, like, his entire yeah. game is just, like, be a center for, like, 15 minutes of contest. And where he gets into trouble is they're asking him to be a center for, like, 40 minutes of contest. Or yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, go out there and grab a couple of rebounds and, like, give us a modicum of rim protection. And uh -huh. just, you know, not be complete barbecue chicken on the perimeter, which is easier <laughs> said than done these days. Like... He's a center. He's like a legit center. I know that he's not he the is. tallest guy, but like you're not going to find some seven foot three guy who can protect the rim at an elite level and you know play inside outside. Like there's like three of those who exist on the planet. They're not getting bought out. They get max contracts. So um, Tristan Thompson True. plays center. If you need someone to, he can set screens. He can rebound yeah. the basketball if he's the only one laying back. Like and he can he block shots. You, he can block a don't couple have shots. All. Yeah, yes, they so, don't have that at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they don't need another offensive weapon. They're not asking to close with this dude. If you're asking somebody on your buyout market to close for you, you've been no. you've been cooked for a long time. This is a guy who might not even play every night. This is a guy who might show up for yeah. five minutes. You know, oh, he's in that weird bridge, like three minute gap in between rotations in the second and fourth quarter. Like, just you get these little little weird moments where it's like, yeah, put him in there. Or if Looney's got three <laughs> early fouls, yeah, put him in there. He can play the Kavon Looney role. <laughs> he can play the Kavon Looney role. I mean, like, as great as Kavon Looney has been, like, uh, clearly it's much more difficult than just let on because not everybody can do it. But I think that Tristan Thompson, for a very short period of time every game, can play the Kavon Looney role. And, you know, he's got a ring, so it's not like he's necessarily chasing. But, he, you know, he'd be out of Sacramento and a little bit closer to Los Angeles where he really wants to go. So I, I can see it working. Yeah, the, and, and uh, when we come back, we're going to, uh, in a future show, I'll actually make you a list, uh, a prospective yes. big man that the Warriors could pursue that are realistic. Would love um, it. First, first, let's talk about one of, if not, I don't think it is your favorite, but it's up mm. there in the upper echelon of your favorite uh, protein bars, and that's Built Bar. Oh, uh, very high it's on the a list. new. 
Yeah, exactly. You, you've been hyping this thing for a long time. It's a delight. Uh, what's up? It's a delight. It's just an absolute delight. And it's healthy. It's covered yeah. in 100% real chocolate. It's got a fraction of the calories, just an eighth on average of the sugar, way less net carbs, yet 17 grams of protein. So if you want to be a buffed gym fanatic like Dieter, start eating those <laughs> Build Bars. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't go to the gym either, man. If it makes uh, Here's an uh, idea I, for the I, I go, and then I immediately negate <laughs> all of it. Immediately. <laughs> Um, here's an idea for the new year. Go to all your secret treat stashes, whether it's at home, in the pantry, at the office, in the car, wherever it is, throw out all those sugary, calorie-filled treats and replace them with Built Bars. Even if you're not a huge fan of working out, you can at least eat something that tastes good and is good for you. That way, when you enjoy a delicious Built Bar, you can always count it. You can almost count it as a workout itself. And again, Dieter swears by these things. Our predecessor, Wes Goldberg. By the way, love to Wes Goldberg for breaking the Tom Brady story that he's going to sign the one-day contract with has the Patriots. Did you notice that? Has that been officially? Uh, has any, I don't know. All uh, I know yeah. is he, he broke step, it. He's a reporter. Step one, I'm going to trust step him. Step one, Wes Goldberg said. Step two <laughs> needs to happen. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I love my Are man, you saying, Wes. <laughs> you don't trust him? If he breaks the story, you don't think it's the, you, he lacks credibility? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm a, I'm a little I'm bit stunned. Because... I'm, I'm a little bit stunned that Wes Goldberg is the one breaking Tom Brady news. Very stunned. I, I, I in fact, we should probably bring him on one day to find out how the heck he did that. But anyways, built bars. He's, he's not going to tell us. He's not gonna tell, <laughs> especially if Tom sources. Brady doesn't. By the way, like, okay, we got to dive into this a little bit. I'm sorry, Bill Bar. You make a train. Just, just okay, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. We're going to do a little bit of inside journalism here with Bill Bar. Uh, <laughs> like. <laughs> Tom Brady can't retire as a member of the Patriots contractually. Oh, unless the Bucks let him go, you're saying? Because I but think they the can't Bucks let him, but him. they can't, but they can't let him go because of a dead salary cap thing. So the whole thing is very oh, weird to me. And if Wes is and if Wes is right, then he's got the source of all sources, who is five steps beyond anybody else's. You know, but he's got Don Yee then, like he's got Tom Brady's <laughs> agent, like online or Alex, which, by the or way, the. The, yeah, the trainer Alex. Yeah, whoever his last name he, is. He might have Alex Guerrero. Yeah, that, Guerrero, that would, thank that you. would make a lot of sense to me. All I'm saying <laughs> is, I'm rooting for Wes. I really am. I'm hoping that it comes through. There's some. There's some weird. It is not nipso facto. So if Wes, if Wes has the goods, that's really good news for for the newsletter. That's really good news for Locked On. Like I, I, Wes could very well have the goods. I'm just a little bit confused as to how this all happens right now. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, all I know is if Brady is with the Bucks by uh, February 4th, two days from now, I think he's guaranteed like $15 million, and I don't know anything beyond that, though. But the whole reason why I brew up, yeah. uh, uh, brought up Wes Goldberg is because he, he also swears by Built Bars. Yeah. He loves these things. There's yeah. so many amazing flavors. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off your order. Again, use uh, the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. <laughs> Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. You can follow Dieter Kurtenbach on Twitter at Dieter. Follow me on Twitter at Dog Surf Roadshow. And you can follow this program on Twitter at Locked On Dubs. Um, I want to show Jordan Poole some love. I want to play a soundbite from him uh, in the postgame presser just because he had a hell of a game, and he's had a hell of a two weeks now. Yep. We're finally seeing the consistency that we've really wanted. I don't, and what I'm seeing with my eyes as the difference is he's not taking as many crazy difficult shots. He's simplifying things. He's such a phenomenal ball handler mm -hmm. that he can get where he wants to go, and he's taking higher percentage shots now. So kudos to him, man. Before I play the soundbite, yeah, what are, what are your thoughts on, on his performance last night in general the last couple of weeks? It's imperative that the Warriors are able to get consistent performance from their guards. And between Steph, Clay, and Jordan Poole, they need to be getting well above, above 50, preferably around 60 points per game. Um, that is going to be the offensive nucleus of this team. And it remains to be seen, though I am seeing it trend closer to the right direction, if all three of those guys can play their best basketball together. Uh, and I think, honestly, the holdup right now is Steph Curry. So uh, good on Jordan Poole, man. He has been tasked with a pretty difficult role. He's had to grow up really quick here 
in this NBA. Let's not forget that this time last year, we all thought he was a bust, right, rightfully so, because he was he was doo doo at the NBA level. Y- yes, um, he was. Yes, so he was. <laughs> it's and been, real it's quick. been a lot real fast. Good on him for for clearly becoming a, a, a quality NBA player and perhaps even more. And, and while while this might not be the difference, this might not be the variable in him turning it around. His work ethic is admirable, and I think that's a huge Wonderful. part of this. Here, yeah, here's a uh, Jordan Poole um, after the the Warriors 124 120 win over the Spurs. Uh, even more importantly, it shows who um, what our characters like. You know, coming from the top of the food chain all the way down is. Um, everybody is excited for each other, wants to see everybody succeed. Um, Steph was just talking to me the entire game, <laughs> the entire game, giving out um, any piece of advice uh, personally as a team, um, not only to me, but other guys as well. Clay was excited. and um, The group chat was blowing up a little bit. Everybody's in the group <laughs> chat. So it's just, it's just amazing to have the camaraderie and chemistry that, that we have, but it's not only through the basketball, it's due to you know, all the relationships and uh, the character that we have throughout the locker room. All right, and that was Jordan Poole. Um, nice shades, by the way. Those are like some retro 80s Oakleys. Like, those are... <laughs> I remember wearing man, those I, when I was a I kid, feel, man. Like, I, I feel so old every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I have never been a fashionable kind of guy, but uh, this Generation Z stuff is... It's wild. It's out of there. <laughs> Good on him, man. I'm certainly not commenting if it's good, bad, or one way or the other, but it's weird walking around in groups of, of youths, and it just looks like the 1990s, and it's like, damn, I thought it was 2020, but here we are. Dude, that is, it is weird in the 90s are trending again. And, and and I want to share one more clip with you, if that's okay. Um, this oh, yeah. is uh, Jonathan Kaminga, just because, dude, like, like his ability now to post players up, I mean, mm-hmm. the growth, the development over just a span of two-thirds of a year is is fascinating, incredible, impressive. Um, and so just a quick clip from uh, Jonathan Kaminga uh, uh, after the game. It makes me super excited uh, just seeing the way we're going. Uh, just seeing the way we are, we are right now to the way we're going. We just feel like we're building something new and just growing as players. And I feel like it's going to be fun to watch. And there's Jonathan coming in. Are you? Do you? Do you feel like he got slighted for the Rising Challenge team? Like I want to. I'm going to share this screen just for the YouTube viewers to see, and I'll verbalize it. Obviously, yeah. um, you might not care about it. And, you and care. You care a, because your buddy Rick is doing it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's Rick Barry right there. But this is the team. Yeah. Um, for me. And these are the rookies. So do you think Jonathan Kaminga deserved? I actually looked at the scoring averages, and Kaminga is averaging less than all these players. But the question is. Yeah. Should that be the main, you know, variable, the main uh, attribute for being on this team? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, did he get slighted or is this fair? I mean, probably got slighted. I mean, he, he's the number seven overall pick. He's uh, been the leading scorer in multiple Warriors wins this year. Like, he clearly, clearly he's something. He's better than some guys. I don't want to take anything away from anybody else. They're pretty big rosters. Uh Cyrus, I, got, I just got to be blunt about something. I have boycotted every NBA All-Star weekend for the last two decades, and I don't plan on stopping right now. I just don't care. I just don't Look, care. I don't care either. I'll, I, I'll I, find I, out I if Juan Toscano Anderson won on YouTube the next day. Like, I just don't care. I, I, I'm i totally with you. With the game itself, to me, the only reason I used to care for a very long time is because every All-Star game I bet the over and cash in. I was on a I was on a tear where I think like 17 of 18 All Star games in a row went over. I don't know why the bookies weren't catching <laughs> up to this. I'm I'm serious, man. And then and then the last two years they've set that number so ridiculously high that now it kind of scared under. me away. And they're still going over. They're still going over. Like I didn't bet the last two years and I would have won. So I don't know. What, I'm not telling anybody that's a surefire thing, but that's my. Yeah, call me degenerate if you want for betting no, on no, an NBA no, All Star game. Listen, man. But you I gotta, you gotta make money somehow. And last thing to wrap things up, uh, what are your thoughts on JTA being in the slam dunk contest? I've never seen a single dunk from him that stood out to me in my life. He's one of the four yeah. competitors. He's got sneaky hops. Um, man, the dunk contest has fallen off so hard. I know. Yeah, it has. It, just, it has. I, I know this is such an empty trope now because no one's like, the dunk <laughs> contest is amazing. No one's like, no one's holding the other side of, of this contract. Um, it's... <laughs> I hope he wins it. Some yeah, good I just, money in a car weird. out of it. You know, like you know, I hope he wins it. Juan Toscano Anderson is a great guy, and 
he is. Uh, an NBA pro, and uh, he's an asset to the Golden State Warriors, and I'm very much looking forward to finding out if he wins the dunk contest the next morning. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Uh, the next morning, I like that jab. Okay, so we'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. Dieter and I, again, we're going to be doing this the rest of the week together. I'm so yeah. happy you're back. Uh, RIP 49ers. Um, <laughs> your, your, uh, your, your, your feeling is that Jimmy G's last play as a 49er is behind him, correct? Is well, it the my, Trey Lance my, era? It, it has nothing to do with my feelings. It has everything to do with the facts, and that is a fact, Jack. And so they're going to trade him, you think? I mean, just a quick second here. Like, what are your, how are they going to get rid of him? They'll trade him. They'll trade him. They'll try to get a second day draft pick for him. And if they are unable to do that, they will bite the bullet and take a third. And if they're unable Ooh. to get that, which I think is ridiculous, they'll get, they'll get that uh, at the very minimum. Uh, they'll cut him because they can't afford to keep him around. It's Trey Lance's team next year. Um, handle that emotionally as you see fit. So no chance of Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady coming out of retirement to play one more year with the Niners. Tom Brady is not going to come and play for the San Francisco 49ers. There's no way that's happening. Uh, retirement is retirement. And in fact, again, uh, it, it, uh, pretty sure contractually it'd be extremely difficult because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would still have his rights. Uh, and by the way, like Aaron Rodgers is under contract for the Green Bay Packers. Why would the Green Bay Packers trade Aaron Rodgers to the San Francisco 49ers? Good point. There you go. And thanks for the football talk, folks. Uh, that was my self-indulgent request. I, and uh, and now <laughs> and now make your second listen locked on bets with our boy Q. Yes. Taking care of all our gambling needs. <laughs> uh, and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available wherever mm. you get podcasts. Dieter, that was a pleasure, sir. And we'll Always. see you tomorrow. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. Take care, everyone.